Hey everyone and welcome back to the Movie Mates mini review in the channel. I am Matthew, of course, joined by my one of co-host and best friend, Callum. Hello there. Now, we've got a bit of a different review today because we're actually reviewing a film from our, our homeland. Um, it's a, it's a, Northern Irish, a Northern Irish film um, entitled Boys from County Hell um, in the classic sort of Northern Irish slang. So uh, I'll pass over to you, Callum, to explain what this film's about. So this, this film is set in uh, a, a rural area of, of Northern Ireland. Uh, we, we don't actually get any confirmation as to, as to where it's set. You know, it's, it's set in this fictional village. Uh, and, you know, is, is it even set in Northern Ireland? I'm honestly not 100% sure. Oh, too sure. I mean, uh, I just you know, assume it's, that. It's kind, of hard, kind of hard to call because the, the, the film doesn't actually have a Wikipedia page. So there, there, there's nowhere to get exactly explicit information about, about yeah. this film. Uh, but you know, we we, we follow these uh, these sort of very down to earth characters dealing with this vampire uh, epidemic. Uh, and you know, I, th I think any anything else I would say would would potentially uh, you know go go into spoilers because it's it's quite a brief film. You know, it's ninety minutes. So I think I think anything that we we have to say other than very general points would would probably steer towards spoilers. Yeah, I'd say this is probably going to be one of our shorter mini reviews. Usually, yeah, our yeah. mini reviews sort of take the piss a little bit with the titles because they end up being forty minutes long, and that, that's totally my fault for titling them that way. But um, I actually think this is probably what will be generally one of more quickest reviews, but also probably one of the more niche films um, we're talking about. Just in terms of, like you said, it's not often we review a film on the channel that doesn't have a Wikipedia page. Now, of course, we reviewed we've reviewed smaller films before, um, you know, but I think this one probably is one of the more sort of um sort of cult sort of films whereas you know it, it, there's not much um sort of not much traction behind it but that being said you know i'm just looking here on, online you know it's got 82 percent in rotten tomatoes empires giving it a four out of five and and you know that's 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 good by all accounts you know so it seems like it's getting good reviews and of course you're you're here to hear our thoughts about it so i guess we'll we'll just head on in mate shall we yeah you know it was it was jarring watching the film and hearing the accent, you know, because it's it's very rare that, that we have, uh, you know, pe people from Northern Ireland in cinema, let alone you know f films with a with a largely Northern Irish cast. Yeah. I mean, about a third of them are English, doing very convincing accents. Uh, you know, the the, the main lead of the film, uh, the guy who plays Eugene, is English, uh, and I, th I think he he nailed it. You know, it was it was just it was just very jarring. You know, I, I, at points I was just I was just kind of like, is, 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 is this really happening just because it's such a rarity? You know, I, yeah. I don't think I've seen anything beyond short films that, you know, have, have a lot of Northern, Northern Irish people or, you know, in, in Dairy Girls, uh, for example, you know, that, that that's probably the, the biggest, you know, most mass marketed, uh, you know, th thing to come out in Northern Ireland. But, you know, when, when it comes to films, I've, I've just never really encountered anything this high a production or, you know, feature length. Yeah, a million percent, bro. One, one of my, I know I mentioned this to you quite a lot, but one of my favorite BBC uh, projects at the minute um, or in recent years is My Left Nut. It's like a Northern Irish um, sort of mini series. And again, it's got a lot of English actors doing convincing Northern Irish accents. And and uh, I think it's Jack Rowan who plays Eugene here. Um, yeah. I actually thought he was from from here. You know, his, yeah. his accent is really, um, you know, authentic. It's fantastic. And um and of course, probably like you said, you mentioned Dairy Girls. Probably the biggest sort of lead in the film is, or the biggest name is, is Louisa Harland um, mm -hmm. uh, here, um, which I, I find she's actually not from here either. She's from Dublin. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I think I think the film generally, the protagonists are great. You know, for, first off, I think they all have really good chemistry to each other. Um, it's just that I actually this I actually would want a bit more screen time with them. It's it is a very brief film, as you said, it's like ninety minutes or something, so it's it's very short. Yeah, you know, I, I feel the film what was obviously brief, but you know, it felt very well paced. You know, it had a slow build. You know, the the, the first act yeah. of the film is is very much just you know establishing the characters, you know, give, giving them a, a very valid backstory. And you know, it, it it just allowed you to really sit within the world, get to know these people, and then you know, yeah. as, as as the events played out, you know, that that led to significant payoff. Uh, you know, it's, I'd say from here we're probably going to be you know veering into spoilers. Uh, you know, there, there's a main character within the film who dies early on. Uh, you know, he is is the first to become the first in the town to become uh, infected with this with this vampire virus. And I just have no idea how anyone in the town. You know, we're we're, we're assuming at, at this point that you guys have seen this film. You know, because I think it, it'd just be difficult to talk about this film without talking about spoilers because it is just it is just so quick. 
yeah. you know and i i think if you haven't seen this film already i mean maybe, maybe we can del- delay putting this this out because i think it's only been out for three days maybe uh you know but you know if, if you haven't seen the film we're, we're, we're going to be talking spoilers uh but i just don't quite see how anyone could pin the blame on eugene when william was killed by being charged by a bull yeah no you said this as soon as the as soon as we exited the theater and i i do have to agree and um, it seems like in this film every character is just just ready to hate on eugene now i i feel i do feel quite bad for him um i think at a point he even gets banned from the local pub um yeah. for sort of like killing uh killing his mate uh, which i find quite funny but I mean, um, if you're gonna blame anyone blame the dad for not you know for not getting the bull properly yeah yeah exactly um i think for me the character that steals the show here is is eugene's dad I, I i didn't mention his name um but i think i think he does really really well one criticism potentially is that for me a lot of the humor is your typical sort of swearing for swearing sake kind of humor I, I, Ironically, it's quite similar to, you know, Mrs. Brown's Boys in terms of that show has a lot of just, you know, throw in an F word or a C word in there and it'll get laughs. I think that can come across as quite lazy in instances. And, and here it, it, there are sort of there are vibes of that where a character, you know, will will swear and and, you know, that'll be it. You know, that's that's the level of comedy there. I think that yeah. works. It certainly it works for the opening few jokes, but then, you know, by the end of the sort of second act, beginning of the third act, I was a little bit sick of it personally. Um, but I, I, as again, you know, that, that's just not my style of humor, really. Um, you know, respect to, you know, other people who, who you know, disagree and it is humor subjective. So I 100% get that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's why I felt personally. Yeah, I, I looked at on, on it a little differently. You know, that, that was sort of my initial reaction to it. But, you know, then, then I sort of thought about it in the vein of, you know, they, they did that and it successfully got laughs. So, you know, in the end, they've yeah. managed to be funny without telling jokes or, you know, uh, a significant amount of jokes, uh, which, you know, is, is really just indicative of, you know, great comedic timing and line delivery. You know, the, the lines themselves might be lazy, but the reason they're getting the laughs is because uh, the, the actor playing Francie is, is you know, a, a, you know, a, a very talented comedi- comedian, really. Yeah, no, the line delivery is spectacular, and I goes to show you, like, maybe my personal humor is not the, you know, the 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 wide perception. You know, certainly when we went to the, again the QFT, you know, the film got a lot of laughs. You know, the, the and it was a maybe not as big as audience as it was for Writers of Justice, um, but I, it was still a big enough audience for it where you know I, I can see this film doing very very well over here. It, it's a film that I would like to see a lot of people talk about as well, and just it, just supporting it because. I, I think there is there's a, not much, not as much action as I was expected, but certainly the character stuff is really really well done. Um, you know, it it is a it's a character piece as well. You know, there's not a lot of sort of CGI or anything or wild costumes. Of course, probably by the budget, it doesn't have the biggest budget in the world. But I think for what it has of sort of the the Dracula vampire stuff, it does well. But the main heart of the film is is of course the characters. Yeah, you know you mentioned you know practical effects and everything you know i really like body horror especially you know when it's done with practical effects yeah and you know i I think when it's in the context of this can't or won't happen you know the only moment uh you you know i i think that that, that's when i best appreciate it because you know you're you're able to remove yourself from it Uh, we talked about this with the writers of justice with the suicide squad you know when something is you know incredibly violent or really bloody you know which this film isn't really necessarily uh, you know, I, th- I think if you can remove yourself because it's context that couldn't happen, you, you feel safer. But here, you know, one moment that kind of freaked me out uh, was the moment, you know, that the film opens on with uh, the old man just bleeding from his eyes. And you think, I mean, there, there are certain medical conditions where, you know, that could happen. You know, you, you have an aneurysm and that's that's perfectly, you know, conceivable to happen. And I, I find that scarier than anything else in the film. Just, you know, as it is as entirely like, face and like legs were just dripping with yeah. the blood from his eyes like that, that that was the moment that really freaked me out yeah definitely it was a really smart opening for the film as well because that kind of jumps to midway through the the main action um of, of the film whereas in essence the film's plot really begins a few months earlier with the, the beginning of the of, of the sort of um you know dracula takeover um I, yeah i mean i don't have much more to say in the film but i think practical effects are used really really well here and you know, the, in in some ways, I thought the film was marketed towards more of a zombie type film. Um, it, it certainly has layers of that mixed with you know with the Dracula and vampire stuff, which I think is quite rare. I haven't really seen that done before. Um, but 
you know, I think, you know, if I'm reflecting upon the film, I think it does the action really, really well, but there's not enough of it. Whereas I would consider this an all out sort of zombie land, you know, um, mm. I think even Shaun of the Dead, it, it's Shaun of the Dead had even a bit more action uh, and gore to it. Whereas this film, it is just the characters chatting and having dilemmas over what they should do next, which I thought was really, really smart. Um, so yeah, I think it's, I, I definitely recommend people to see it. Yeah, I, I think the, the the zombie idea that you have, you know, it, it, it is certainly valid because, you know, normally vampires are, you know, very human, but, you know, they just have a, a quench, uh, the, the, you know, a, th- a thirst that, that they want to quench for blood, uh, you know, whereas zombies are, you know, without personality, without, uh, you know, cognitive ability. And that really seemed to be what happened once you were uh, infected by this, by this vampiric virus. So I, I do think it, it was really more about zombies, but I suppose they wanted sort of, uh, you know, that ant- antagonistic figure who was responsible yeah. for it, you know, and it made more sense that that would be, you know, someone more more aware, which, yeah. you know, is, is where the vampire comes in. You know, I, I think Shaun of the Dead, the, the violence and the amount of action was, I suppose, easier to do because it was like this larger than life, you know, comedic world. Uh, whereas here, you know, it's, it's, you know, very rooted in reality. You know, it's what, what we like, you know, these, what, we, we, you know, with these, you know, people do uh you know when when they're you know sort of strapped for resources and they they've never encountered something like this whereas i just feel like in Shaun of the dead there, there, there's just something a bit off about the universe where you know something like this happening wasn't that big of a surprise yeah i see that i see and, and with this one as well you know they do poke fun at the classic how you defeat zombies um you know aspects in films they try like sunlight they try decapitation they try sort of ripping the heart out like they try those classic cinematic tropes and sort of poke fun at them in that way and i think this film gives a very realistic depiction of what you know maybe it's, it's because we're from here and we understand like the idioms and the and the phrases and stuff like that but i think it's certainly a very realistic approach as to what would actually happen and you would just scream and just run away and try to you know you would try the classic decapitation stuff you know it's it's definitely what yeah. what i would do so yeah, like I, th- I think Shaun of the Dead, is, it's such a different film as well. You know, those kind of, um, those, those, like the comedic tone there is is so different here. Well, obviously here it's funny, but Shaun of the Dead is just a hundred percent jokes. You know, um, so I think they're very different, but there's a little bit of comparison to be made there for sure. So, do you do you think this has appeal outside of uh, you know, outside of here? Do you do you um... think this could be? seen in america and people people would find it funny it, you know humor is subjective so i think definitely there are people who could find this funny it's just that i think the jokes and the and the lines are so i think the film understands that its main audience is you know people from the uk and people from ireland so i think the film 100 percent acknowledges that and it's not intended to be this sort of international piece but i think it yeah. definitely has the potential to be you know i i don't think there's anything that i would say is so um so specifically for that one audience where i would say i know it's it's preposterous to put it to another audience in america or something or asia or whatever so i would definitely say you know the plot is universal you know the you know those kind of sci-fi um horror supernatural stuff or is popular everywhere so i th- I think it could be popular but maybe the humor the humor definitely is not wouldn't be popular anywhere is what i'm saying um because mm. it's just so um polarizing i guess to, for someone who, who doesn't understand it what about you mm. Yeah, I, I think when you're making a film, you should prioritize making it, you know, as, as good and enjoyable as possible for the audience that you intend it for, rather than making it for the biggest audience uh, possible, yeah. you know, because because when you really boil it down to, you know, how, how can we make this the most, you know, easy to, easy to digest film by the most people, you know, that's obviously the, the Marvel formula, which, you know, it makes sense, you know, it's Disney, it's a conglomerate, you know, they, they need I mean, they obviously don't need the money, uh, but, you know, when they're investing so much money into each film, you know, they, they like to see a big return. But, you know, here, I think they, they've done, you know, the, the you know, they, they've done the right thing. You know, it has the most integrity to be like, you know, how can we make the best film for this specific audience rather than, yeah. you know, the the most digestible film for the biggest audience. So I, I think they've approached it in the perfect way. Maybe percent. Members and pro. Um, do you have any more notes to say in the film? One very minor criticism I'd have is I, I feel like uh, the, the primary vampire, you know, the principal antagonist 
one, he doesn't get any dialogue. Uh, you know, he he is also sort of this zombified vampire, you know, who, you know, is presumably conscious of his actions, but, you know, he doesn't actually make any communication with anybody. And, you know, his presence is sort of quite minimal. And I assume that's budgetary, you know, because yeah. from what I could tell, he was a, he was a CGI character. Uh, you know, so I, I do think, I do think Abertax's presence within the film was, was quite minimal. And I, I would have liked to see more, but I understand with a 90 minute film, it worked with the pace. I think if it was a two hour film and he had the same minutes of screen time, I would have a, a much larger problem with it. Uh, you know, but, but, but I think it was, it was the closest thing I had to criticism, but, but I understand it. You know, I, I definitely agree. I thought the way they sort of, yeah, me, me, my only problem with it was the way they sort of dealt with that character, especially, you know, the ending and, and how, how they stopped, how they stopped him. So I think maybe that's, that's where uh, a potential criticism could come in, but yeah, I, I suppose maybe it is, it probably would be my guess, probably to be the budget I get, uh, you know, but um but yeah, you know, I think I think there's a lot to be a lot to be enjoyed here. And as I say, I would definitely recommend people to see it. You know, I think it's a, it's a, it would be a, a very good film to see with your family, with your with your girlfriend, your boyfriend, you know, whatever. I think I think it's a really it's a really sort of it's a, spe- it's a special film for for me because it's not so often that I'd watch a film from from the country that I live in and, and kind of you know it's, it's not so often that, that that happens, especially in the big screen. You know, I was looking on online and. You know, this seems to be getting showings of the Odeon and, and things like that. So it seems like it's it's not just this sort of you know cult classic and that it potentially could be going to a wider audience than I had certainly anticipated, but with it with sort of major major cinemas like that. So hopefully, hopefully a lot of people go see it. I would definitely recommend they would. Yeah, you know, that there's this romantic tension throughout uh that you know involves uh Eugene and Claire. Uh you know, Eugene uh is obviously William's best friend, uh and Claire was uh, in a relationship with uh, with William before he died. Did you want to see them get together, or were you happy that they didn't? The film was definitely teasing it, weren't they, with the hand holding and stuff? I'm kind of glad they left it where they did. Although strangely, they they kind of they pulled the opposite, and instead of Eugene going off to Australia, it's actually Claire who does, which I thought was quite bizarre because you kind of you kind of get the idea from the Eugene character that he's you know he's he has other thing like he wants to do other things. Other, didn't stay in the town you know and I think I think that's it's certainly um it's certainly a thing I think probably a lot of people in Northern Ireland could relate to because you know it's, it's obviously not the biggest country in the world and a lot of people probably think that they want to you know see bigger things or do bigger things but you know I think I think you know both are you know ultimately valid you know I, res- I respect the fact that the, that the film says oh you can still stay in your town and be and do big things and do good things so I think I think um I think maybe the, the more curious choice rather than the romance was that Claire actually went to Australia and not Eugene. Um, but how did you feel about it? I feel like uh, I, I was glad that they didn't get together. Uh, you know, I I like when, you know, you have a, a principal male ca- character, a principal female character, and, you know, they, the film doesn't feel inclined to, to force those two characters together, yeah. especially with the, the context of, of, that char- of those two characters' relationship. You know, the, the message that, that you're saying, you know, about, you know, you, you, you can just be yourself, stay with your family, stay in your small town and, you know, li- li- live a great life. You know, you, you don't need to, uh, you know, you know, you know, you know, sometimes people can, can find themselves just by, you know, be, being around the people they love. Uh, you know, you, you don't you don't necessarily need to, to venture off. So I, I thought that was that was a sweet message. Uh, and I, I just really, really enjoyed this film. Uh, you know, I, 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 th- I think thinking about it retroactively, I enjoyed it. Uh, even more than I did, you know, after after I'd seen it, uh, you know, I I think talking talking about it with you sort of strengthened my opinion of it. And I suppose, man, if we were going to ask you, would it be a massive hit or or piece of shit? Well, just just before I say, you know, it, it there there was initially you know plans for Shaun of the Dead uh, to approach, you know, di- different genres of horror and supernatural. You know that there was going to be a sequel where he encountered vampires, where I think that this could potentially become a franchise where it does just that uh you yeah. know where because there was sort of a there was a vague sense that you know that there there was sequel potential at, at the end of the film you know uh with them with uh claire and eugene parting ways you know it sort of felt a bit unfinished like there was you know uh More to a, be seen. A, a lack of closure yeah and, you know it's it's unclear whether that was just you know as intended or whether it was and maybe we could pick up after this you know i, th- I think if they did that if it was just vampires again i'd maybe be you know, uh, uh, not as on board. But, you know, I think if next film, Aliens, I feel like I'd be fully in. 
yeah, I think there's definitely a sequel potential here for sure. I'd like to see, like to see a film with maybe a bigger budget where I could expand it to maybe you know extraterrestrial or maybe something else supernatural like witches or something. Um, I think it would be fun. Or, or they could they potentially you know I think a, a big part of this film is like like that Irish folklore. So I think you know there's probably loads of stuff that um not many people have heard of that they could explore there. Um, you know I'm sure I'm sure there's there's quite a few um a few things like that. But I mean yeah I'd I'd definitely be done to see another film of this or or whatever they decide to do. I hope I hope I hope so because you know I I think there was a little bit of un, unfinished business shall we say um at the film where I kind of thought oh you know there's a continuation here I think in the story. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think there was anything shocking or revolutionary about the film, but, you know, it was a fun time out. You know, it was great to, you know, see that location represented. Uh, you know, I thought I thought the acting was amazing and the comedic timing of all the actors was top notch. So it, it's a massive hit for me. Yeah, no, same, bro, same. It's it's weird because I, I sort of come out of the film and, and sort of saw, oh, it was good, but it wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. But, you know, reflecting upon it, I, I probably like it a bit more than I did when I saw it actually yeah. but the same as you chatting through it I think it's definitely not perfect I think it, it doesn't it maybe doesn't you know handle the villain um I say villain but you know the the antagonist of you know that that sort of ancient Irish vampire very well um but that being said you know I, I get budget constraints and things like that um maybe impacted it so I think the characters are great um there's really good message in there too so massive hit for me uh, of course but yeah, that concludes another mini review in the channel. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks very much, Callum, for your time today. I appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, yeah, please be sure to like, subscribe, and, and comment your thoughts on Boys from County Hell down below. We'd love to read and react to them, of course. And um, yeah, you can check out our iTunes link or email in the description down below. You guys know the drill. Um, hope you guys are all keeping well. Hope your family and friends are keeping safe and well also. Take care and uh, goodbye. Bye-bye.